Hello, this is a product review of my show. I like get products from time to time, and today's product I'm going to be reviewing, installing, and operating a sand filter system for the pond, the farm pond. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Yep, it's a product review on this Vibor sand filter system uh, for my pond. Now, this pond is about chest deep. I'd say about four feet deep at its deepest. It measures 30 feet wide and 40 feet long. So, with a maybe a one foot knee deep depth around the edges and a little bit. So, I calculated the depth of the whole water mass of the pond and it's no larger than an above ground 12 foot diameter uh, uh, pool so they use these filter systems on swimming pools and i thought hmm why don't i apply it to my pond so i'm going to install it we're going to operate it and we're going to watch to see if it cleans up the pond let's go Okay, let's go through the product list of things I had to acquire to make this thing functional. This is a sand filter system. You can purchase this from Amazon. I will leave a link below. They have different sizes. I've got this next size up from the smallest for the size of pond that I have. This unit comes with a pressure gauge. That's going to come in handy when you're operating this system. A set of rubber O-rings. Yeah, you're gonna need those. Also, it comes with the this collar clamp. I'll show you the application of that. And these little bolts, they go to fix the collar clamp around the collar of the sand filter system. It also comes with this plastic doohickey. You're gonna need this to start the system and set it aside for later. Uh, uh, maybe a year later when you go change your sand out, you're going to need this in place when you change your sand out eventually if you ever have to change your sand. Chances are you may not have to. It's just back flushing is how you clean the system. But keep this in a safe place just in case. It also comes complete with bulkheads. You've got these two identical bulkheads. One is uh, for outlet that go back into the pond. And the other one is for outlet for when you flush this from time to time. And this one is the inlet. This actually attaches to your pump. We'll cover the pump in a moment. And this is the valve, the adjustable valve. You have off, you have filter, you have waste, you have open for winter, closed. There's different adjustments on here you want to use. And these are your... This is where your return goes for going back into your pond. This is where the pump sucks it in or blows it in through here. And when you adjust this valve, this is where the wastewater blows out. You run it for about two minutes and it should clean out all the debris from the sand and get it ready for more filtration. We'll show you that when we get ready for that application. And then you have the sand filter system itself. Yeah, it's got the filtration stuff down inside. You want to be careful with those. Make sure uh, they're all intact for when you start assembling it, putting it together. Now, the other products I had to purchase to make this system work and set it up, one 10-foot long, one and a half inch diameter pipe, two one and a half inch elbows, just the straight elbows, nothing fancy, then I got another inch and a half elbow. This is uh, outside, inside. Yeah, you want to get what's yourself one of those. And you're going to need this. It's threaded on one end, an inch and a half, and it accommodates that pipe I just showed you in that section. Uh, yeah, you're going to need this to apply to the pump. Let me show you the pump. Now the system does not come with a pump. You have to order the pump separate. I'll leave a link down below. I purchased this pump. Yes, this is the same kind of pump 
that you would put in a septic tank to pump it effluent out into a sand filtration system and here's what you got this is the pump i'll leave a link down below that way you guys can order one it comes with a float valve attached but i detached a float valve because the float valve is only for the application of in a septic system when water level comes up it turns it on pumps it out and uh it turns itself off this is going to be a continuous run application on my pond to uh, filter out the, the the green pea soup stuff out of the pond yep it's all safe now when this plugs in be sure to plug it into a cf or gfci outlet ground fault circuit interrupt outlet only that's for operators is going around a water area or exposed to water. You want to make sure nothing else but a GFCI rated outlet. Now the filter medium, I bought me a hundred pounds, two fifty pound bags of this number twenty pool filter sand. I got it at my pool supply place, and that's what's going to go inside the sand filter. I got a bag of Quick Creek concrete to pour a level surface out on the uh, shore of the pond. And then I've got these two large blocks. One is actually going down in the pond inside the water on which the pump is gonna set. The other one will be leveled and set on, on the shore edge to uh, accommodate the sand filter. And of course, when you're working with plumbing pipe, you're gonna need the tape. You're gonna need your primer, your cleaner, and your glue for your pipe you're also going to need these tools to be able to tighten down the pipe fittings and make sure you got a good secure tight fit and i got my sawzall to cut that big long pipe okay, i think right there is where i'm going to set up the sand filter so down there is where i'm going to set up my pump so i got to get into the pond and uh set my slab <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna fix my base first. Now this cap is to put down over that pipe to keep sand from going down inside. Now we're going to fill this with that 100 pounds of sand. They recommend you put some water in it first. And slowly pour 
both bags of sand into the sand filter vessel. Okay, two pad bags, uh, 50 pound bags of sand fills the sand level right up to here. Now I'm just gonna top it off with water. Now you see why we need this plastic cup to keep sand from going down inside that uh, filter system. That O-ring sets right down inside of that little groove. And you want to make sure you securely fit this right over the top of that pipe. Make sure these are facing out towards your pond. These are your clamps and your hardware. Make sure you got those together and put them in place. On one end of the clamp, it has a space that accommodates the nut. Go ahead and press that nut down in there. I'm gonna use my pliers to force it, there you go. And do the same with the other side. There, seated in place. Now these are Allen heads. I got my Allen wrench. Now I gotta attach the bulkhead to the pump uh, inlet of this uh, valve. So I'm gonna give several wraps around the thread and this will give it a good seal. Thread it into the part where it's marked pump. And if you have to, use your pipe pliers to tighten it down. Now for this application, we have a clear uh, port here that you want to put on your pump side so you can see if the, uh, the pump is actually pumping water into the system. Again, we're gonna put this tape on, Teflon tape, Teflon tape. Okay, before you screw it on, you got a bag of O-rings you want to put an O-ring on here so you don't want the leaks. So we're going to take an O-ring and put it right down there like that. See? And then you're going to take this piece and you're going to slide it on there. And now you're going to screw it on to this piece because this piece is where the pipe is going to glue into. So you want to make sure this is tight to begin with. Okay, now this just screws right onto the bulkhead that you already previously installed. And this takes the O-ring also. It has a little groove to seat the O-ring just like this other one did. Yeah, get that O-ring in there. And since you have the O-ring, you don't need to tape these threads. Because this will allow you to disconnect right here the pump uh, plumbing from this, uh, the sand filter system. And this should be tight. Okay. Now the filtered water returned to the pond and the, uh, the water flush system uh, both coming out. They have their own little ports but the bulkheads and the collars they look just the same they're identical 
these are different than the pump side going in. So we're going to, I'm going to throw, uh, put some Teflon tape on this bulkhead and we're going to attach it to the pond side. Again, more Teflon tape. And this is your outlet bulkhead. Just go ahead and screw that in. Use your pipe pliers to uh, tighten it down. Attach your O-ring. Again, that just slips inside the little grooves there. Put your connector in through your collar. Okay, that's ready to glue the pipe in because the pipe is going to go out from that and I'm going to elbow it down into the pond. And I'm going to set it about this high above the pond. That way when the water pours back in, it kind of aerates the water as well. So we get a good water aeration. Okay, now the outlet is the same way uh, for the pumping all of the uh, soil uh, to clean out the sand. It just goes and floods out into the under the ground, but not back into the pond. And you run about two minutes and it filters out. It just washes all that gunk that we filtered out of the pond out. Now this is the bulkhead in which you want to, again, attach an O-ring. Now there's that little groove that I was telling you about. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little groove in there. And that's where you want to seat your O-ring. And then we're going to tape it with this Teflon tape. Screw the bulkhead in. Screw that on. Now, your clean pipe, I'm, it could be anything, even from a flexible uh, inch and a half fire hose. Uh, I'll put something on there and I'll hose clamp it on and roll it up when I'm not using it and just leave it nicely and neatly down here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set the pump next. I had to get the sand filter system set up first because now I've got to get in the water and I've got to attach all my fittings to the pump. Let's attach the fittings to the pump first. Inch and a half threaded on one end and we'll glue the pipe in on the other end. But again, we need the Teflon tape. And this pump, like I said, it's only a pump. Uh, you can just order a pump that you use for a septic system. Some of you guys are lucky to have a uh, uh, percolating uh, gravity feed septic, but those of us who have bad soil, we have to have a sand filter system. So this pressurized pump actually takes the effluent, which is the toilet water and the gray water urine, and it uh, pumps it through the line up into a sand filter uh, through just kind of like this little uh, system here but it filters all the ick out of it and then it sends it down a drain field like your standard drain field so uh, and then it percolates into the ground after that so that's what this pump is so we're gonna just gonna uh, thread that down Now that's set up, so now we've got to attach 
the pressure gauge because this will help you determine when it's time to clean out your filter. So this is where you put your pressure gauge on. Remove this. I'm going to put some Teflon tape on this. Screw it into there. And I want to be able to see it. Okay, I'm going to measure out from the intake to see how far, long my first pipe cut is going to be. And I think three feet. Yeah, it's fairly shallow, three feet. To get a proper bond with these, in the um, bulkheads, luckily I have my pipe wrench, is these things get on tight. I'm going to use this pipe cleaner first. I'm going to clean this side of the pipe. See how it just takes everything right off, including the ink? Yeah, we're just going to get it a good clean. Clean the other side because that's where an uh, elbow is going to go is on this other side. And we clean the inside of both elbows because that's where the primer is going and that's where the glue is going to go on the inside of this and the outside of the pipe. Okay. Clean the inside of this. And the outside of this pipe. And don't forget to clean the inside of these because you're going to glue your pipes to the insides of these. And then we primer it. Primer your elbow, not that one, this one. And both ends of this pipe, which will extend from the sand filter out over the pond, to attach to an elbow that's going to go down and attach to your pump. Okay, I'm ready to glue the elbow onto the pipe. So I'm only gluing one side of this elbow and one side of this pipe. Place your elbow on and give it a twist so it seats. If you don't tw uh, twist it, it'll, it, it'll force itself out, which is weird. It's really bizarre in how it does that. 
And now we're ready to attach this pipe to the uh, <laughs> pump end of this uh, bulkhead on the sand filter. Okay, I determined my pipe is going to be 51 inches from the pump up to the elbow. Okay, 51 inches right there. First we clean this in. And let it dry. Then when we're ready, we'll primer it. And let it dry. And then I glue the one end. And also glue the piece that goes into the pump. Be liberal with the glue. Seat that and don't forget the twist. And let that dry. Okay, the next step is to get the pump in and connected. So let's do that now. So as you can see, it's not very deep here, but hopefully it's deep enough for me to submerge my pump. And I'm gonna put this cement piece down here, just so the pump isn't sitting down there sucking mud. I'm gonna set the pump in. Let's see, that's the cement. We need to clean this. Let it dry. I'm going to primer this. Now remember, we primered the inside of this. Let that dry. This part of the pond is not even a frog pond. A suitable uh, depth of a frog pond is knee deep. Knee deep. Knee deep. Okay, now that that's dry, let's apply this cement. Liberal amounts in here. Liberal amount out here. Now we're not a we may not be able to twist it, but, well, yeah, yeah, we can twist it. See? Now we just let it set. Now I turn my attention on the return line, so let's do that. 
and make sure it's primered. It's already cleaned. Primer it again. Now, out of that 10 foot long section of uh, one and a half inch hose, uh, pipe I got, this is what I have left. We're gonna use both of these. So I'm gonna make sure but both ends are clean. That's the cement. We're gonna, let's see. Uh, we don't need to clean this end. Well, yes, maybe. Yes, I want to clean this end also. Primer both ends. I'm just going to let this stuff sit here and dry and then we'll proceed from there. Now I have an elbow here I'm going to be using on this uh, outlet. I want to make sure I clean them. And then the end piece, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. Now a little fact to point out, the pump may not be deep enough right now, but that's okay. Uh, I could let the pond dry up again and we could dig that out with a tractor like I did before and we can add an extension. We just cut that pipe, get two collars and add it, uh, a longer extension to get the pump to go down deeper if that's what I need to do. Now I'm going to cement the end of the longer piece because I'm going to attach an elbow. Make sure it's well seated and after I primered this side of it and this pipe I'm going to go ahead and glue up this piece and one end of this piece and attach it right here. And let it dry. While it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and clean this special angle. I decided to use it in a different application. I could always buy another one for uh, the outlet for that flexible fire hose to uh, run it down the heel here into this creek. Yep, we're just going to let that dry. Now that that's all dried up, we're going to go ahead and put a liberal amount of uh, glue on that. And a liberal amount of glue on this. And I'm going to apply it to here. And I'm going to angle it this way. A little bit yeah see so that's how I'm gonna do it and there's a reason for it you'll see why yeah and now it's time to apply the uh, outlet 
glue the inside here. Glue the outside here. And press it into place. Okay, there's the Vivor sand filter system that is all set up and ready to go. We're going to see how well it filters the pond. Uh, let me show you the valves. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is closed. You push down and turn, and you want to push it in, position it here. It says open for winter. And this is waste. This will make it uh, flush out. Uh, just get all the water out this is the filter this is what you want set when you're running the uh, system to clean the pond this is rinsing the system this is recirculating the system and this is backwashing the system uh, to get all the sand cleared out and then this is closed you never want it closed when you uh, start your pump always open it to um, recirculate or filter. I'm opening it to filter uh, and then I'm gonna fire off the pump. Let's see how well it goes. Okay, first time firing it off, here we go. Yeah, the water looks a little green coming out of there. But you can see how green it is going in. Now this is why I turned uh, the water to direct it in that direction. So it would not only circulate the pond and uh, push the water around in a circular pattern to filter in the bad water into that pump and up through the sand filter system. It also aerates the pond. Yes. So uh, we're going to let it sit here, uh, we'll revisit it in, in a week to see how well this works at clearing the pond. We'll be right back in a video second. Okay, it's, uh, I shut the pump off overnight and I run, I have to come out here and flush it every hour because the pond is really filthy and it really packs in the stuff in the sand. Let me take you through the system that I have to do to flush it out and get that water pressure back up again. Okay, you can see how low the water pressure is getting, putting out. Pressure's high in here. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the pump. We're going to turn this to waste, turn it back on. And you're supposed to run it about three minutes. And it's just draining right down in my creek bed, getting the chickens all excited. Then I'm going to plug it. Always turn your pump off when you're changing your valves. I'm going to set it to backwash. For about a minute. Then I'm going to rinse the system. And then I'm going to turn it back to filter and watch how the pressure improved. Look at that. And even the pressure gauge 
shows lower. Because uh, <clears throat> I was able to flush all that debris that was collecting from the pond. It's going to take a week or so to get this pond cleared up because there's so much debris in the pond. It's filthy. Now, I want to point out my pond is fed by rainwater runoff during the winter and spring months. Uh, so it maintains the level of the pond. During the summer months, I have to fill the ha pond, keep it full with a garden hose from my well. Now this will not clean out the algae that's in here. That's going to take a, a formula that I'm going to add to it that'll bind to the algae and uh, cause it to fall to the bottom. Uh, but I'm also adding vegetation. I found a, a, a lake resource on from private property to be able to harvest some aquatic plants because aquatic plants will naturally clean your water as well for pond health using only products that are safe for fish. Anyway, this is my demonstration set up and uh, we'll be back in a week and see how well the pond does. I'm also adding that additive and we'll see how clean the pond is. So my opinion on this product, my review, it assembles really easy. It's a good design. You do have a lot of extra stuff you have to purchase to make the system work. This is when you buy the Vivor sand filter system, you're just getting the tank, the vessel, and the inner parts. You're not getting uh, all the plumbing. You do get the bulkheads with it. You have to buy the pump. You have to buy some fittings. You have to supply the uh, other pipes, the pump, everything. So using it for two days, it's working. I, you, you can tell it's working because it's filtering out all the nastiness and the bigger stuff that's in the pond. Uh, like I said, stay tuned in a week. We'll see how well it goes and see how clear the water is. Uh, but the pump is working. The filter is working. I like it. Uh, I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm or our frugal homestead tech high in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. Please stay tuned to more videos. You can do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That alerts you to new videos as I upload them. Uh, share our videos, be safe, always be kind, and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys in my next adventure. Bye-bye now.